Yo, greetings once again. This is Dr. T. I'm still wearing a new hat and it is still new. Uh, today's objective. Uh, you're going to be able to graph a line given any kind of linear equation. We've seen several types. No matter which one you get now, you're going to be able to graph a line. So, what are we going to do with this uh, little bit of knowledge? Well, we can use three different methods for graphing equations. You already know how to use a t-table. We've done that on tests. You've done it on labs. Uh, so I know you can do that. Uh, we've also used the slope-intercept form of the equation where we're given the slope and the intercept. We plug in a coordinate and get our line. Uh, you're going to also be able to use the x and y intercepts. And I'm going to give you some more on that on another video, but today we're going to introduce this idea of using an x and a y intercept and, um, and graphing a line uh, using those two uh, points. Okay, now the trick is, or your goal is, I should say, to determine which method is the easiest to use for your type of problem. Okay? Now, let's see what we're going to recommend here is that we take all these fancy transitions out because dang, they're getting to be a pain. Alright, how do you know which method to use? Well, here's the deal. If the equation is in standard form, AX plus BY equals C, then you're going to graph using the intercepts. If the equation is in slope-intercept form, that is our friend y equals mx plus b, then you're going to use the slope and the intercept, or t-table, whichever is best for you, to graph. Now, third situation comes up. It's in neither form. Oh, what are we going to do? All right, well, you rewrite the equation in the form you like the best. So if it's not in either form, you get to put it in the form you like to work with. It's great to have choices. So which graphing method is the easiest? <coughs> well, I believe that you're going to find that using the slope and y-intercept uh, or a t-table might be the easiest for this particular problem. Alright, and now we're going to look at how do we, graph, how do, we do a graph with this y-intercept information. We've got our slope of negative one-third. We have our y-intercept of two. What we're going to recommend here is that you start by graphing the y-intercept. That's easy. From the y-intercept, apply rise over run using your slope. The rise here is negative one. The run is three. And you repeat this again from a new point. That will allow you to then draw a line through your points, and you have it. Now, I'd like to demonstrate this if I can. Negative one third x uh, plus two is equal to y. So what I'm going to do is exactly uh, what I said, and I am going to move this up a little higher. Okay, so what we're going to do is start at the y-intercept of zero and negative two. And then I'm going to apply the rules of my rise over run. I'm going to go down one, because it's negative one over three. I'm going to go down one and over three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go down one, and I'm going to go over one, two, three. And then I would connect the dots, connect my points, and I would have my line. Just as simple as that. Okay, so we've been through this. And we now know that we start with that y-intercept, we apply the rule, we repeat, and we connect our points. Now, what about this equation? What's going to be the easiest equation? What's going to be the easiest route for graphing this? Well, we have this equation that's already in standard form, so using the x and y-intercept uh, is going to be the easiest method. If you notice here. The negative 2 would be our A, the 3 would be our B, and the 12 would be our C. Now, how do we graph with intercepts? This is something we haven't discussed yet. Let's take a look at what we're going to do with this process. First thing we're going to do is find the x-intercept. If we've got the problem in this format, can you think of a way to find the x-intercept? Remember now, the definition. The x-intercept is where the y is zero. Clue? Maybe. 
So, we have our y is going to equal 0. We plug this into our equation right here. And now we have negative 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 12. Everybody knows what 3 times 0 is, I hope. We're going to end up then with negative 2x equals 12. We divide both sides by negative 2. And we get x equals negative 6. The next thing we've got to do is figure out what our y-intercept is in this case. And if you remember, uh, the y-intercept x is 0, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug the 0 in for the x, and we're going to solve uh, for y. And when we do that, we get negative 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 12. And of course, you know now we're going to divide both sides by 3. That gives us 4. So our y-intercept is 0 and 4. Now we've got two coordinates. You know what to do? Think about it. This last step is so simple. We graph both points and draw a line through them, and that's all there is to it. We've got our 0, negative 6. Oh, no, I'm sorry, we got our 6, negative 6 and 0, and we have our 0 and 4 coordinates. And then we're just going to connect the dots, draw a line. How much easier can it be connecting two dots? I hope this has helped you understand which method to use when you're graphing a linear equation. And as always, I'm looking forward to getting back into the classroom with you.